Hi, it's Deborah Cook. Um, this is the video that Everard doesn't want you to see. This is now the third time he's tried taking it down off of my YouTube channel. Um, I have freedom of speech. I am allowed to tell the truth of what happened to me and what I observed and what I experienced, okay? And everything that I am showing you, I have all the evidence for everything that I've ever stated in any one of my videos, I have all the evidence to back it up, everything I'm saying. This one, um, you're going to see a police report to back up everything I'm saying in this video. Um, so anyway, this is the video that Christopher Everard doesn't want you to see. Okay, here we go. Hi, this is Deborah Cook. It is Friday, July 3rd. 2015 and it is about 10 o'clock my time and um, I was almost oh god a little less than halfway to Las Vegas tonight and I turned around because um, this was a little more important now um, be looking for a video that uh, Matthew and I did and Matthew is editing this but um, in light of what just happened today, I want to put up um, this shorter version, but the longer version, Matthew is editing it, and so be looking for it on YouTube. And I will have it on my channel, and Matthew will have it on one of his channels. So, um, anyway, what you are looking at on screen is, this is something that was posted um, June 27th, 2015, by a woman named Jackie Farmer, and she is posting a message that Chris Everard, Christopher Everard, wrote. And I'm going to read it for you right now. Um, message from Chris Everard. Hello, an answer to the people on this blog who are wondering why many of the other authors and filmmakers are ignoring or steering clear of the Hampstead investigation. I can hardly say that very evil and horrid people who have long-term links with Mormonism and other cults, some of which you could easily describe as being satanic, are threatening and falsely accusing investigators of being pedophiles themselves. Okay, let's just go over that first sentence real quick right here. I don't even know what he's referring to. Um, you know, I, I, I don't keep up with this Hampstead investigation. Um, I have one friend who's telling me that Chris Everard is constantly talking about it, but I, I haven't kept up with it. I don't know who this Jackie person is. I really don't know what's going on in Hampstead. And I, I, and honestly, if Christopher Everard is, is involved in it, I, I don't trust it. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right that right now. I just don't trust it. Now he's saying that uh, very evil and horrid people who have long-term links with Mormonism and other cults, some which you could easily describe as being satanic, I, and then he goes on to refer to me. But first of all, I'm not a Mormon, I'm not in a cult, I'm not satanic, um, and I'm not threatening anyone, and I'm not falsely accusing anyone, because what I've accused Christopher Everard of is absolutely true. Everything I've accused him of is true. Okay, then he goes on to say, it has happened to me, a woman who now calls herself Deb C. That's what's so funny. A woman who now calls herself Deb C. Um, no, that's my YouTube channel name. Deb C is just a variation of Deborah Cook. Okay? I'm not calling it, you know, Betty Boop or something. I'm I'm it's just a variation of my name. All right. A woman but he's like making it seem like it's something kind of sinister, like, ooh, a woman who now calls herself Deb C. No, nope, that's me. Okay, that's me. Deborah Cook, Deb C is just a variation of Deborah Cook. Um, and, and, and then he's going on and on and on in some of these posts about why I won't show my face. Half of Christopher Everard's friends list don't show their face. Does he, you know, go on and on and on about them? I mean, look at his friends list, all right? Then he says, a woman who now calls herself Deb C, infiltrated the offices of my television network. Stop right there. He has no offices. He has a house in the south of France, and it's filthy, and it's gross, and it's not a television network. It's not television. doesn't go out over the airwaves. It's just internet shit, and it's not a network, okay? Not a network. 
So right there, lie, lie, lie. Then he says, I befriended our staff. Okay, what's this hour? Okay, first of all, he doesn't have an hour and he doesn't have staff. And I didn't befriend anyone because they don't exist. Then he goes on to say, and was on the surface, he's saying this about me, and was on the surface a wonderfully intelligent and helpful person. Yes, I am wonderfully intelligent. That I will agree with. And helpful person. However, we were all a bit naive back then, again with this we stuff, when it's just him, a little bald fat man, sitting on a filthy vineyard in the south of France, getting up to all sorts of shenanigans and hiding in the truth movement. That's what he is. Okay, there is no we. It's just him. I'm sure he has a few accomplices in other locations, but he has no TV network. He has no offices. He has no staff. He is a liar and a fraud and a charlatan. And in my other videos, you will see he has child pornography on his computer. Then he goes on to say, we could see that she was strange and looked odd. Okay, whatever. But we always give people the benefit of the doubt until she managed to abuse the trust we gave her and now she is outed as a troll. I'm not a troll. I don't troll anyone. I don't, I don't go around the internet trolling people. I just have this YouTube channel and I am exposing Christopher Everard. That's hardly a troll. I don't go trolling people. I have only ever said the truth about Christopher Everard. That's not a troll. Look up the definition of troll. But Christopher Everard is a troll, and he gets his little minions and followers to troll for him. Then he goes on to say, What we have discovered so far about this woman who calls herself, again, who calls herself Deb C. Because it's my fucking name, you asshole. On YouTube is that she embezzled cash from one of our bank accounts. Okay, first of all, it wasn't his bank account. That was actually a bank account that he conned me into setting up for him. And technically, I could have taken all the cash, but I didn't. Chris Everard wire transferred every single penny to himself, to his HSBC bank account in Chislehurst, England, right outside of London. I think it's actually a part of London. I'm not sure. And um, the Chislehurst address he's using is actually his sister, Adelphine's. Adelphine, he's using your address on his HSBC bank account that he's using to launder money. You might want to know that. Um, and then he says, embezzle cash from one of our bank accounts by faking signatures and changing passwords. Nope. No, no. Uh, he changed the password one time, and I had to go in and have it changed back. Um, and then he goes on to say, she is linked with a larger ring of trolls. No, no, I don't know any troll, and I'm not in a larger ring of anything. And then he says, she deliberately hijacked an ongoing investigation into a pedo ring, marketing videos of pole dancing children, which were manufactured in furniture store showrooms somewhere in Eastern Europe. She did this by thieving files from our correspondents, and he spells correspondence wrong, who were contributing footage and interviews and data to our documentaries. And there's no R. He has nobody. He is, he, it's just him alone. And he has a few Facebook idiots that Google shit for him, and they send it to him, and show me a pay stub. Show me that you're actually an employee because you're not. He has some admins on some of his Facebook like pages, and that's it. They don't get paid. There's no pay stub. There's no hour. There's no network. There's no offices. There's no staff. He's a liar, all right? Now, the most important thing here that I want to alert you to is that he says, she deliberately hijacked an ongoing investigation. Okay, first of all, how do you hijack an investigation? He never investigated this stuff. In the time that I knew him, he never investigated anything to do with pedo rings. Okay? Then he goes on to say, pedo rings marketing videos of pole dancing children. All right? I'm just going to stop right there. And that was June 27th. On June 29th, this one goes up on some sort of 
Hampstead blog, which I, I, I don't know. I need to brush up on what's going on in Hampstead because I really don't know. But someone named Jackie Farmer posted this up on this Hampstead blog. Message to Chris Everard. And then she writes, Chris, Ev Chris left this message in the comments. It seems that there are, and this is Chris, these are Chris's words right here. It seems that there are people who have misconstrued some of my earlier comments, and therefore I would like to make it clear that my comments are regarding a response to the question posed, where are all the big guns? And I made some examples of myself and fellow researchers and radio hosts. In the light of this situation, and some of them reading cut, copied, and pasted versions of my comments, I would like the republished, re-edited version on the tap wire, which that's what I was actually reading from right here. That was the tap wire. Let me scroll up right there. Tap blog, tap wire right there. Okay. Uh, on the tap wire and on here to be removed. Those are Christopher Everard's words. I would like the republished, re-edited version on the tap wire and on here to be removed. And I shall write a better article and make a better contribution to this excellent blog, which many people have found informative. And then Jackie writes to him, what Chris wrote is in italics, what Jackie wrote is in uh, Roman characters here. Thanks, Chris. I have removed this post. However, I do not have authorization to remove it from the tap. Feel free to write to Henry and ask him if you would like it removed. If you write another article, I will happily publish it. Thanks very much. But someone has written to me politely suggesting that you made a mistake about Deb C. I hope that, is, that if this is the case, you will be able to amend it and apologize to her and Henry as I submitted the article in good faith. Thanks, Jackie. Okay. Now, Christopher Everard responded with this. And I'm not even going to read this because I really don't know what's going on in Hampstead. I really don't know. And I apologize for that. I'm an American. This is not covered in our news over here. So I don't know. Now, he is uh, at the bottom. He, he's going on about, oh, thank you. Hello. You know, thank you for responding. Blah, 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 blah. And he's going on about this Hampstead thing. And then he writes, P.S. Deb C. And he puts it in single quotes right there, is using a robot app on Facebook to create multiple fake profiles. No, I'm not. That's Chris Everard. We're going to get to that in a second. And her best friend has been forcibly committed for psychiatric counseling. Really? My best friend is driving to Las Vegas as we speak. All right? Her and all my other friends are going to Las Vegas as I speak right now. I don't know who he thinks this best friend is that has been forcibly committed for psychiatric counseling. Um, I don't know who he's even referring to there because I don't know anyone personally in real life who has been forcibly committed for psychiatric counseling. Okay. I know someone from Facebook who was um, in a, a in some counseling, but that's it. I do not know anyone from my real life, my real friends, who has been forcibly committed for psychiatric counseling. Um, and I don't use a robot app. I don't even know what that is. And I don't create multiple fake profiles. Okay. I have one Facebook page right now. One. Right. Um, then he goes on to say, she is a proven liar and I would like her IP to be handed over from her comments and the comments of any of her friends, which do not exist. All her friends are actually her using a hacking app. Okay, first of all, I'm not a hacker. I don't even know how to hack. And even if I did, I wouldn't do it because it's against the law and I don't commit crimes, unlike Christopher Everard. Now, he's the one asking for my IP address. I've never asked for his IP address, ever. I don't care, okay? He's asking this Jackie person to hand over my IP address. Wow. Why? Why, Everard? Why? Then he says her friends, which do not exist, all her friends are actually use her using a hacking app. She has been life banned by the Facebook Corporation. No, I haven't. For over a year, and I, that little thing is blocking it, for over a year as it, and is in need of counseling. Um, no, 
that would be you, Everard. And I really don't think you're in need of counseling. I think you're in need of prison. So let's get that straight. Um, now, I'm going to show you why he is backpedaling and begging this Jackie person to take down these two posts, which they are down now. But he was begging her on June 29th to take down these posts. And I will show you right here. Let me just move these out of the way. Refer you to the original here. Okay. This right here is a police report. This is the last page of the false police report that Christopher Everard made about me. Now, Christopher Everard, back in February of 2014, called my local police and lied to them. He sent them a 50-page email, which was nothing but lies. And he actually, in the first page of the 50-page email that he sent my local police, he lied four times before the first comma in the first sentence. Yeah. And the funny thing is, is as he's making this in the first page of this 50-page email that he sent my local police, um, he actually admitted to committing a crime himself. He actually admitted to having my old Facebook page disabled. And the police were like, oh my God, you know, he admits to committing a crime in the false police report he's making about you. They thought he was off his rocker, okay? But this is the last page. Um, and you can read this at your leisure, I don't care. Um, what I want you to, to direct you to is the second paragraph. When the detective was asking me, well, first of all, they called me on the phone and I said, hey, actually, can I come in and meet with you? And they just wanted to ask me like two questions on the phone because they knew this guy was like such a fraud. They just wanted to ask me two questions and close this thing. And I said, you know what? Don't close it yet. Can I come in and meet with you? And I go in there with a ton of stuff and I show them everything. Okay. And that's where this is coming from right here. And that when I, I requested to go meet with the police. So I'm sitting there with this detective who's like such a nice guy. And um, he's writing this report. And in this report on the second paragraph, he says, I asked Deborah if she ever forged Chris's signature on the company's servers and bank accounts, because obviously that's something that Christopher Everett was accusing me of. Um, bank accounts, Amazon accounts, or Facebook accounts. And she stated that she did not. Deborah also explained to me that Chris tried to have Deborah's internet disconnected through my uh, internet provider. And I blocked off certain people's names and my internet provider and things like that. I, cause I just don't want people, you know, I blocked off certain things because I don't want Chris Everett's trolls attacking people, you know, if they find them uh, disconnected through blah, blah, blah. and therefore she had been working with such and such investigator, so and so and so, who told her they would not be shutting her internet down because Christopher Everett actually tried to have my internet shut down before he made this false police report. And my internet provider actually called me saying, there's this guy, Christopher Everard, and we can see that you've actually put security on your account and you've warned us about him. Well, he just called in and he's trying to have your internet shut down. So they had actually contacted the police before I did because they knew that Christopher Everard was a criminal. So, um, yeah, they told me they would not be shutting my internet down. Deborah stated that recently somehow Chris shut her Facebook page down and created a fake profile and a page for her which had 13 friends. Well, first of all, Christopher Everard actually admitted that he had my Facebook page shut down. Um, now this fake page, he puts up this fake page um, February 12th, 2014. And it's a fake Deborah Cook page that Christopher Everard created. Okay, so that's what this is referring to. Um, I was able to see it because a friend of mine let me log in on their Facebook page and I was able to see it February 12th, 2014. And I was able to see it before he cut the friends list. So um, Chris shut her Facebook page down and created a fake profile and page for her, which had 13 friends on it. Deborah stated that Chris was using the page to slander her name on the internet. Deborah stated that she began looking at the 13 friends listed on the fake page and noticed they were actually created before she ever even met Chris. Deborah stated that she searched on the 13 profiles and began to find things she considered to be very strange. 
And what I did was I searched the friends of the friends of the friends of those original 13 friends. And it leads you into a deeper, darker, weirder spider's web of shit that Christopher Everard created. And this is what this is referring to. Um, Deborah stated that she searched on the 13 profiles and began to find things she considered to be very strange. Deborah stated that some of the profiles had friends which appeared to have profile photos of women on them that, and were watermarked with the names of pornography websites. Uh, Deborah stated that she believed Chris was involved with some sort of blackmailing and pornography ring. Deborah stated that she was with Chris in Egypt in late October or early November 2011. Deborah stated that she was in their hotel room and logged onto Chris's white MacBook laptop. Deborah stated she saw a folder on the desktop titled Art, and she decided to open it. Deborah, first of all, that's not uncommon for me to open something that says Art because I have two degrees in Art and Design. Okay, so I go right for something saying Art or Design or whatever because um, that's just my background is Art and Design. Um, Deborah stated she saw a folder on the desktop titled Art, and she decided to open it. Deborah stated she found eight to ten videos which contained nude girls from the ages of four to fifteen. Deborah stated one of the videos had a four-year-old white female with blonde hair fully nude pole dancing. Yep, you heard it right there. And it's right there in the police report. Um that's why Christopher Everard is backpedaling and begging this Jackie woman to take this down because he probably sobered up and came down from his high and he reread what he wrote and he realized he just tightened that noose around his fat little neck a little more because I have never gone public on Facebook or the forum or YouTube with what I saw in those videos. In fact, I never even said videos. Okay. Never even said videos. And then he goes one, one further pole dancing children. And he probably realized, holy shit. Uh huh. Right there. Christopher Everard with three little words, pole dancing children is admitting that he has child pornography on his computers. Right there. Three little words. And that's why he's asking for this stuff to be taken down. Also, if he's saying that people stole files, he's accusing me of stealing files, which I've never stolen a file from him or anyone. Um, if someone stole files, that's also admitting that you had the files to steal. Right there. So he's admitting it like twice. Twice. Pole dancing children. I've never gone public. You can watch every single one of my videos, and I have never mentioned pole dancing children, but I did mention it to the police. I've never mentioned it publicly. And Christopher Everard, and I mentioned it to, to the police back in 2014, okay? Um, <clears throat> I also made a report back in 2012 to the IC3.gov, which is the division of the FBI. Okay, and I've spoken to the FBI about this. So, um, yeah, Christopher Everard outed himself as someone who is in possession of child pornography right there. And you can see it side by side. Right here, he mentions pole dancing children. And right here, I'm telling the police what I saw on Christopher Everard's computer of fully nude pole dancing children. A four-year-old white female with blonde hair, fully nude pole dancing. Mm -hmm. And I've never gone public with it about this before. So that is why Christopher Everard had those had Jackie remove those two things. And I don't even know who this Jackie woman is. But I would advise her not to be having anything to do with Christopher Everard. He's not a researcher. Oh, let's just get into like uh well, first of all, let me finish this police report and get this done with. Um, fully nude pole dancing. Oh, okay. Deborah stated she got very angry and confronted Chris about the videos, and he told her that it was strictly for research, which any law enforcement officer knows that research is no excuse for Christopher Everard to be having child pornography in his possession. It's 
not an excuse. But Christopher Everett said that he was legally allowed to have it for that purpose. Deborah stated that the videos had a date of 2005 for when they were placed on the computer because they were actually time stamped 2005. I didn't meet Christopher Everard in person until he, he approached me on Facebook September 2nd, 2010. And I didn't meet him in person until late October, 2010. So this was five years before I even met Christopher Everard that he had child pornography on his computers. And then now he's saying that this is for research. What research? Did he ever make a DVD about this? Did he ever write an article on his shit little magazine that isn't even a magazine? Did he ever do anything about it? No. No. He hasn't done anything about child pornography or pedophilia until I went public about him November 27th, 2012, because he knew I was a threat to him. And so all of a sudden he starts being like, pedo this, pedo that, pedo, 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 and child pornography and da, 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 all this kind of stuff. He's hiding behind Google search words and meta tags. And you would really, really have to be like really simple, a simple human being not to realize that because that's what he's doing. He is using the truth movement to hide behind he is a man who has child pornography on his computers and he's hiding in the truth movement. And then when someone goes forward about him, he screams persecution or troll or this or that, or she looked odd or she was strange or, or she, she hijacked an investigation. No, no, I'm just going public about what he is. And I have every right to, and I actually double checked with the police and I have every right to make these videos. Um, then, what was it, 2005, for, I'm, I'm continuing reading this, this police report, 2005 for when they were placed on the computer. I asked Deborah if I was the only person, I asked Deborah if I was the, where is it, I asked Deborah if I was the only person she had reported this to, and she stated she had already reported the incident to the IC3, which, the, which is the government-ran entity which partners with the FBI and the National White Collar Crime Center. Deborah showed me the copy of her complaint with IC3, which was issued complaint number, da 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 da, da and was dated da, da 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 2012. Based on the information and docu documentation provided by Deborah, it does not appear Deborah has committed any of the crimes alleged by Chris. Based on my findings in this case, based on my findings, this case is being closed unless unless further information is discovered. Right there. This is what Christopher Everard does. Back in February of 2014, he, Christopher Everard and his little minions had my Facebook page disabled and he admitted it in a 50 page dossier that he sent my local police. Then they slander me for more than an hour, February 9th. Um, February, well, yeah, they slander me for more than an hour on the radio February 9th. They disable my Facebook page February 12th. Um, uh, February 12th was when I was able to see that he has this weird spider's web of like more than 20,000 fake profiles, which is hilarious because that's what he's accusing me of and that I use some sort of robot app, but it's actually him. Um, and those of you on his friends list might remember that when, you know, before he cut that friends lip, list to that face that fake facebook page then on um february 25th i think i set up my youtube channel february 25th 2014 i think i set up my youtube channel february 26th i'm getting a call um from my internet provider saying that he's trying to have my entire internet shut down and i have that phone call recorded actually and i have actually sent that phone call to matthew the recording of that um, then, uh, before that, I think he actually tried to have my YouTube taken down. He couldn't successfully get the YouTube taken down. Then he tried to have my whole entire internet taken down. So this is how Christopher Everard works. Okay. You need to really, really wake up. This guy is a criminal and he's hiding in the truth movement. I have seen child porn on his computer. I have told the police about it. 
I've told the FBI about it. And now this is why he had this down. He slanders me over and over and over again in this whole thing. And, and me and Matthew did a whole um, like six hours video about this. But right here, pole dancing children is why he had this post removed. Pole dancing children. Three little words tightened the noose around that fat bastard's neck. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. All right? Anyway, there was some other stuff that I was going to talk to you about because he was actually on the radio today and he was slandering somebody else, but I think I'm going to leave that for another time because um, I'm, just, I'm just tired. I'm just tired of this crap. And I should actually be in Las Vegas right now. But I want to put this out there, and I want you guys to be safe. Oh, another thing. Um, if you are on his friends list, okay, make all of your photos of your family and your children private to only you and your family and your friends that you know from real life. I don't care how sweet these people seem to be on the surface that you meet on Facebook. You keep your photos of your children private to only you and your family and your real friends who you trust from real life, all right? Please, just do that. Just err on the side of caution. Go through your whole Facebook page, go through all your photo albums, and you make every single photo that has a child in it private to only you, your family, and friends from real life who you trust, okay? Because Christopher Everard looks for things like that. If he actually says, oh, if someone doesn't have photos of children and their family on Facebook, their profile is fake. His closest friends on Facebook have photos of horses and dogs as their profile photo. And then he makes a blanket statement like that because he wants to see photos of your children. Make them private. All right. I've been warning people about this since 2012. Make your photos of your of your children, especially private to you and only you, your close family and friends, you know, from only real life. Do not trust anyone you've met on the Internet. All right. Just err on the side of caution. Anyway, I'm going to stop. I am tired. I am going to go have a tea and just relax for a little bit. And anyway, I want to wish everyone in America a happy 4th of July. Have a safe and happy holiday. Drive safely if you're going places. And don't play with fireworks. The fireworks are gross. Anyway, they scare dogs. So, but you have a safe and happy, happy holiday. All right? And um, I know this is a lot of, like, shitty information right now. And I know a lot of you are going, like, what the hell? But just... Be safe, all right? That's the only reason I ever went public about this, was to warn other people. I could have easily remained silent about this for years, but I didn't, because this this actually pisses me off, and it puts people in danger. Um, but make everything private. Don't let Christopher Everard or anyone on the Internet see photos of your children and your family, all right? So you stay safe out there, stay safe on the Internet, and stay away from criminals who have child pornography on their computer, like Christopher Everard does. Okay? Have a good night. Okay, that was the full video that Christopher Everard does not want you to see or hear. Okay? It's so funny how in this so-called truth movement, you guys love whistleblowers. You love it. You can't wait for them to come. It's like, wow, what's that whistleblower going to say? What's that whistleblower going to say? But you know what? I can tell you right now, you don't like whistleblowers when the, the whistle is being blown on someone in the truth movement. Think about that for a second. As much as you like whistleblowers, you don't like me because I'm blowing the whistle on one of your little truth gurus. This self-professed public figure uh, uh, truth leader, okay? He's a public figure and touts it whenever it suits him, but then he screams privacy to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Think about that. I'm blowing the whistle. I am a whistleblower on a self-professed 
truth leader in the truth movement. I'm blowing the whistle on him. Think about that for a second. You guys love whistleblowers. You just don't like it when the whistleblower is blowing the whistle on someone in the truth movement. All right? Think about that mentality. And you have a wonderful, wonderful day.